Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to part three of how to crochet for total beginners. Now if you haven't already I do recommend going back and watching the first two videos because that gives you a bit of a rundown of everything you need to know up until this point. So if you haven't already go back and watch those two videos or the one before this if you've watched the first one and not the second one and then come back to this video because otherwise you may find it a little bit hard to follow along because you won't know what's going on but if you have watched my first two videos and you're ready to go please keep watching in today's video I'm going to teach you all how to do the half double crochet which is one of my favorite stitches and I'm also going to show you how to fasten off your work so once you finish a project how to finish it off pretty much so if that is something you are interested in please just keep on watching so for today's video, I'm just using a five millimeter crochet hook with an Aran weight yarn or a Templar yarn, but you can use whatever yarn and hook you have access to. Um, again, I do talk about how to choose the right hook and yarn um, for your projects in my earlier videos. So again, if you haven't watched those, go back and watch those and I'll teach you everything you need to know. But as I said, in today's video, we are going to learn the half double crochet first up, and then I'm going to show you how to fasten off your work. So to get started, all we're going to do is create a slip knot. This is something I showed you back in episode two and pop that onto your hook. We are then going to chain up However many chains you like, really, I'm just going to do about 20 just as a um, example, but you would just chain up the amount of chains that you need for your project. But for today's example purposes, I'm just going to chain up 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I know I was going quite fast then, but again, I did teach you guys how to do the chain stitch back in episode two. So what we're going to do now is skip the first two stitches at the beginning of our chaining. You could also skip one if you prefer, but when you're starting out, I do recommend just to skip two. It just gives you a little bit of extra room and it'll make your edges nice and tidy. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. Okay, that's a bit better. So what we're going to do, as I said, is skip the first two chains and then we're and then we're going to go into that third chain from our hook. So to complete the half double crochet, all you're going to do is yarn over. As I said, skip the first two chains. This is purely just to give you a little bit of room to move. If you didn't skip any chains at the beginning of your work and you just went ahead and half double crocheted or you know, completed any stitch into that first chain stitch. It's just gonna make your work really tight at the edges because you've got no room to move. So if I was to go into that very first chain, it would just make my edges super duper tight and probably leave them looking a little bit untidy. I'm not gonna get into it too much because I don't wanna confuse you guys, but how many chains you skip at the beginning of your work will just depend on what stitch you are using. Um, for the half double crochet, I like to skip two. That's pretty much all you guys need to know right now. So we're going to skip the first two chains and we're working into that third chain from our hook. So to complete the half double crochet, all you do is yarn over, insert your hook into that third chain from our hook, yarning over again, pulling through that first loop only, yarning over again, and pulling through all three loops on our hook. And that is our first half double crochet. Super easy. I love this stitch because it works up super quickly. It is so easy to do. And it's just one of those mindless stitches that you don't really have to think about. So I find it really therapeutic when I'm making something using this stitch. But I'm gonna show you guys again. So all we're going to do is yarn over, finding that next chain, inserting our hook, Yarning over again, pulling through that first loop only, yarning over again, and pulling through all three loops on our hook. And that is another half double crochet. I'll show you guys again. So yarning over, 
finding that next chain, inserting our hook into that chain, yarning over again, pulling through that first loop only. So you should have three loops remaining on your hook. We're then yarning over again and pulling that through the three loops on our hook, just like that. I'll show you guys again. So yarning over, finding that next chain, inserting your hook, yarning over again, pulling through that first loop only, yarning over again, and pulling through all three loops on our hook. So this is what it should be looking like so far. I am going to go ahead now and quickly finish off this row and then I'll show you what we do once we get to the end. So I have just completed my final half double crochet of the row, as you can see, and now I'm at the end. So to move on to the next row, all we're going to do is chain two. So one, two, and then turn our work. So just like you're flipping the page of a book, you're going to turn your work so then it is facing back the other way, just like that. And then what we're going to do is we won't be skipping any stitches at the beginning, but we are still going to be skipping those chain two stitches that we just completed. So these are just our turning chains. That's why we skip them. They're not actually a stitch. They just give us a little bit of room to move so we can get into that next stitch without the edges being super duper tight and untidy. So we're going to skip those two chain stitches that we just completed and we're going to go into that very first stitch which will be the stitch that you last completed um, so the last stitch of the row before if that makes sense so again exactly the same all we're doing is yarning over finding that next stitch inserting our hook yarning over again Pulling through that first loop, yarning over again, and pulling through all three loops on our hook, just like that. And you can now continue doing that all the way till the end of the row, but I'm going to show you guys again just a few more times just to make sure that you've got it. So again, yarning over, finding that next stitch inserting your hook, yarning over again, pulling through that first loop only, yarning over again and pulling through all three loops on our hook. Just like that. I'll show you again. So yarning over, finding that next stitch, inserting our hook, yarning over again, Pulling through that first loop only, yarning over again, and pulling through all three loops on our hook. Just like that. Pretty straightforward, guys. Just keep practicing until you get it right. Um, feel free to rewind this video or start it again if you need to and watch it as many times as you like until you have absolutely nailed it. I'm gonna go ahead now and finish off a few rows and then, like I said before, I'm gonna show you how you can fasten off your project. So once you've finished with your project and you wanna fasten it off, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So as I said, I'm just gonna go ahead now and complete a few rows just so we've got something to work with and then I will meet you back here at the end. All right guys, so I have completed a couple more rows. So as you can see, I've got a little bit more to work with now. So to fasten off, all you're going to do is, that is our beginning tail. So just push that to the side for now. You're going to find your working yarn. So the yarn we've just been using and you are going to grab some scissors. So grab your scissors and we are going to leave a tail in our work of a about 
I want to say five or so inches just to be safe and then you're going to cut it away from your skein of yarn so it's no longer attached and then what you're going to do is simply pull your hook out while pulling that tail through just like this and then your end is pretty much secure because it's not going to come undone unless you pull this strand of yarn back through your stitch, which we're not going to do. But just to be safe, we are going to now go ahead and fasten it off. So I will just zoom in a little bit for you guys so we can see what's going on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is grab our crochet hook again and we're just going to insert it in next to that last stitch. So that's our last stitch there and I'm just gonna insert that hook in behind it just like that and then all I'm going to do is grab the end of this yarn so kind of make a loop over your finger like this and then we're going to hook that yarn around our hook and pull it through behind that stitch just like that then all we're going to do is take this tail and push it in behind through that loop and pull it tight. Just like that. And that is how you fasten off your work. What we would then do is go ahead and sew in our ends. So I will quickly show you guys how to do that as well. It is very straightforward, it's very simple. All you will need is a darning needle or some kind of needle that has a big enough eye to fit your strand of yarn through. So it can be any type of needle. Um, I think this is actually a chenille needle. I think that's what it's called. I prefer these ones because they do have a pointier tip, so I find them easier to use. You'll find the darning needles have more of a blunt tip, um, but it is totally up to you what kind of needle you use. It really does not matter, just as long as the eye is big enough to fit your yarn through it. So what we're going to do is grab one of our ends and thread that through our needle. just like that and then all we're going to do is find our row of stitches and we're going to thread that yarn in under those stitches to make it nice and secure the reason we do this is because you don't want to cut your yarn right here at that knot because chances are it will come undone which will cause your work to unravel and obviously we don't want that to happen we want everything to be nice and secure and we don't want it to fall apart so please do not cut your yarn right back here where we've just knotted it because it will come undone like it's guaranteed to come undone especially if you're washing it so always make sure that you do leave a decent enough tape as I said five or six inches or so just so you've got enough to be able to sew it in and make sure it is nice and secure because like I said the last thing you want is your project falling apart when you've just spent hours and hours um, making it so that's why we go ahead and sew in our ends rather than just cutting that tail off Okay, so to sew in the ends, all you're going to do is find that row of stitches we've just completed. It doesn't have to be the row you've just completed, but you just want something that's nice and close to that tail because you don't want to thread it down here and then you've got like a big loose bit of yarn running down the side of your work or something like that. So we're going to go in under those stitches just like this. You don't have to do it one by one, you can literally just do it how I'm doing it and just thread your needle through as far as you can until you can't really go any further. And all you're going to do is pull it through. Just like that. I like to go in a fair way just so it is nice and super duper secure. Pull it through. And then what I like to do is go back down 
that way. So you wanna make sure that you're not just pulling it back through. So you always wanna make sure you kind of skip a stitch, I suppose. So it catches on there and it won't just pull the tail you've just pulled through back out, if that makes sense. So I can see that there is a stitch there. So I'm gonna skip that one and go into the next one because then I know that it won't just pull straight back out because that um, stitch that we skipped will be holding it in place. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I think um, if you're just watching this video and you're not actually doing it while you're watching this video, it may seem a little bit confusing, but if you're actually doing it, um, or when you actually start doing it, you'll be able to understand it a lot more because it'll be right there in front of you. So again, just pulling through. And as you can see, you cannot even tell that we've just sewn our end in. Like it just looks like part of our work. So now we will still probably have a little bit of a tail left over. That is totally fine. At this point, once you've sewn it in, you can now go ahead and cut it off nice and close to your work. Just like that. And that is how you sew in your ends. And I would then go ahead and complete that exact same step using my other end um, and just sew that one in down here exactly the same way as we just sewed that one in. So that would be nice and secure as well and you wouldn't be able to see that tail and your work would be complete. Anyway, guys, that wraps up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did find it helpful. If you did find this video helpful, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up as always. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you will be notified of all my future videos. If there's anything you would like to see in particular, please feel free to comment down below. I am always open to your suggestions. But in the meantime, I will see you next time, guys. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day or night. Bye.